Hello everyone, D&D Breakfast Club here. Today's video has me really excited and let me tell you why. I'm going to be showcasing a new product, an amazing program that I think is going to help shape the world of D&D and other tabletop games for years to come. The program I'm talking about, and the program that you see on the screen, is called Dungeon Draft. What is Dungeon Draft? It's a map making program that will allow you to create dungeons, boats, cottages, and castles. Really, the world is at your fingertips, and with a little out-of-the-box thinking, together you and I will conjure up some magical maps. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to dive in with no hands-on experience. So today, you and I will journey together into this new program for the first time to discover a new world. Before we begin, I just have to tell you that I'm going to give away a copy of Dungeon Draft free of charge. The only thing you need to do is like, subscribe, and comment below. Doing so will make you eligible to win, and the drawing is going to be held one week from today. Let's get started. If you're anything like me, you downloaded this program and it immediately installed it. I ran into a little bit of trouble, I had to disable my antivirus to get this to work. If this is anything like Wonderdraft, it'll be pretty intuitive at every step of the way as far as I can imagine. So it looks like it has two presets, 40 inch and 55 inch TV. Let's just go with a bigger version. You can also do different tile widths. Let's see how many I can go. 100. So 100 by 100. Looks like it has a map wizard as well, which you can... I would assume you can use it to generate different types of maps randomly. That might be pretty cool. But let's do our own at first. If you hold control and you scroll out... It allows you to zoom, and same with scrolling in. That's a pretty big map. Let's try something a little smaller. Fifty by fifty tiles. If each tile represents five feet in a lot of uh, tabletop role-playing games, that's kind of the scale you're working with right here. It's actually pretty big. I haven't really thought of exactly what I wanted to do, but a couple of ideas is a small cottage, something simple. I wanted to see if I could recreate a boat. Um, the creator Megasplute did a video on a boat. I wanted to see how the cave system works. I'm really interested in cave maps and if they're generated naturally or randomly. Let's start with a cottage, which will be even smaller. Let's go ahead and do 20 by 20. On the left hand side, it looks like there's a lot of different tabs, just like Wonder Draft. So, first I'll click Design, Floor Shape, Wall, Portal, Cave. So, there is cave tools, there's wall tools. When you zoom, or when you hover over these different presets, it looks like it shows you the style that it's going to be done in. That's pretty interesting. Floor types. That's an interesting floor type. So click and drag at any point and it creates a floor. Control Z to undo. Object tool. Looks like there's a lot of objects in here. Tags. Lighting. Obstacles. If I hold control, yep, if I hold control, it'll select more than one tag. Maybe shift, yep, shift selects all the tags and it adds them to our library panel on the right. Scatter tool, so scatter is more items and objects. Environment. Interesting. So you can have uh, different colors in the background, probably change the opacity. Light. Oh wow, that's kind of cool. Does that place it? It does, so when you click down it'll place it. You can change the size or the intensity. Let's go ahead and start with just a little cottage. Cottage, it's going to be wooden floors. Use these old rickety boards. How big have we got? Let's make it like a little five by five. I 
That might be a little small, but I did say I wanted a small cottage. Can I expand it? So you can even expand it and expand the walls with it. That's really neat. Maybe put on a little stable back here. How would I do that? Okay, so that looks like hay floor. And I bet I can create a wall in between. So this is the floor shape tool, wall. Let's just go with this type of wall. Double click to lay it down. I wonder if I can change the wall that I already created on this. So I created a wall over the other wall. And that has to do with the floor shape tile and the style of wall you choose. Don't know how to get rid of... Just to mention, if I didn't already, this is an early access program, so everything I'm doing is... There's gonna be bugs, whether we like it or not. There's also probably things that I'm doing wrong that I haven't figured out. Alright, so let's go back and create the wall over it. Double click to place it. Is there uh, doors anywhere? Portals. Okay, so I created a door, but let's change that door. And when I create that door, it took out the wall. So I'll just add one back in for now. I'm sure there's got to be a better way to do this. Maybe make a little room back here. And we can create another door inside, right there. wonder if you can open the doors. That would be interesting. Rotation. So if I don't anchor it. It snaps on a grid. If you look at the bottom, I see this grid and this snap, so if I change that yeah so it looks like you can do an open door but you wouldn't want to create a wall there and I don't know if I can delete those walls yet I'm sure there's got to be some way am I deleting I don't know exactly what I'm doing right here. It's pretty interesting. Let's go back to our walls tool. Edit points. Oh, wow. Put it back. Maybe I should snap it back. There we go. Can I add a point and add a point? All right, well, this is not the most ingenious way to do this, but it'll work for now. Oh, this is not working at all. All right, let's get the... Let's see if I can undo. Okay, back to the here. Grab the walls, grab the rickety wall. Add a portal. Let's uh, make it anchor. Anchor it there.
Don't know exactly what's going on here. But it's not letting me re-anchor my points. Ah. So if you look here on the left hand side I had edit points clicked. And when you do that it lets you change your points and that's not what I was meaning to do so it was not working correctly. So watch this edit points tool. Make a wall, make a wall, make a door, again go back to the walls. Like that, make a wall there, and to the doors here. Unsnap it, and there's an open door. Took a little bit more work than I like. It would be kind of cool if there's a feature where you grab the door and maybe using the scroll. Oh. So the scroll wheel does rotate it, but does it rotate an anchor door? That's the question. So let's go anchored. It does not. So yeah, if you had an anchored door that was set there and you rotated the mouse wheel, it'd be nice if that also rotated it automatically or changed it from anchored to freestanding. All right, well, here's the first level of the cottage. Let's see what kind of objects we can add in. We'll go to our object panel, wherever that is, portal tool. It'd be nice if I hovered over these, if it told me what they were at a quick glance or like a pop-up. There's not many right now, but as there's more that are going to be added eventually, I think that'd be pretty cool. Object tool. Skeletons. Or we can just do all. Let's go try some of these different filters out. Different kinds of chairs. The scroll wheel seems to rotate things. And we don't want them to snap. I'd, I'd rather place my objects freely. Put a chair right behind the door. Is there a fireplace? And is there a way to search? A search query would be nice if I could type somewhere. Hatburn. Oh, okay, so there's presets at least for tags. Looking for a fireplace. Lighting? I guess there's a campfire, a lantern. I don't see any fireplaces offhand. Alright, we'll throw a campfire in there for now. I wonder if scatter terrain I'd have any better luck. Scatter tool, object tool. Don't know if there's much of a difference. It looks like... They seem about the same. So maybe it's how you use them. Well, I'll mess with that a little later. Let's get some furniture, actually. Throw in a bed. It's a pretty large bed. Got a sleeping comfort, I guess. Put this over here. Can you change the color? That'd be kind of cool. Used. I'm sure I have a custom color so you can.
scrolling looks like it rotates and if I hold alt and scroll it changes the size so you don't have to come over here and slide it so alt and control you'll be using quite often when you're working with this program or when you're working with wonder draft as well put in a bed put in some barrels where they might store some stuff whoa that's a big one The ale barrel fixtures. Oh, look, a fireplace. So can I grab this terrain? I would like to see if there's a way to maneuver the terrain. This button on the left hand side, the little arrow, click what you want, hit delete. So let's go back to our objects. Add in a fireplace. I do want this to snap. Right there. Gotta add a front door. I'll put that right here. Maybe make the wall It'd be nice if I could figure out how to change the path a little Because if I want to change one little part, how are you going to do that? Is there a way to grab that piece of the wall and slide it into here? If there is, is it easy? That's the one thing I'm running into where I'm really... Maybe it's the edit points? Because it auto-generated these walls on the outside when I created the floor plan. However, when I hover over the auto-generated walls, it doesn't seem like it wants to give me an anchor point to mess with. Oh, okay. So I click this thing, and it changes the auto-generated walls. Alright, well, that's a workaround right now. Let's create a little more life to this building put in a rug see everything I can put in here I do like when you hover over all these items, it tells you what they are. Some of them are a little hard to tell exactly what they are. So this is a gold pile. Monster bones. This is a stable. They haven't been here in a long time, and that is a dead animal in there. Treasure chest. Let's go ahead and uh, a little treasure chest. We don't want to make this home too much of a hoarder's home, so I won't put too much in here. I want to work on some of the terrain, and then let's try a new map after this. Looks like when you right click, it confirms the selection of the wall.
something I was really interested in, which a lot of people do, they just disregard in their maps, is the terrain around the dungeon or the terrain around the buildings. Having this in here is a huge benefit for your maps, for your imagination, being able to do whatever you can think of. I watched a couple of the developers' videos, and there's some really cool stuff you can do here. Looks like here is a selection for all different types of terrains. It's already included. It's kind of an interesting feature. I'm not sure how much I like the way it pastes it down right now. It seems like if you hit it and you click and hold, it starts filling from the center in intensity. What I would rather is there is a sparse feature where you can kind of sparsely apply it. it it seems like it wants to connect to already made terrain or already made paints while they're trying to connect to each other, if that makes sense. And it's probably the way it's coded that does that. Okay, just doing this changes exactly how that works. I wonder if there's just one more type of slider that I'm missing. So that's the terrain brush, water brush, material brush, path tool, sorting. Looks like there's only a few paths right now. How about trees and everything? Trees, okay. We'll scroll down. Just trying to see if there's a way to make the scale larger when you have these. But it doesn't seem like the alt is making these trees any bigger. Oh. Wonder if that's the scale that they okay. This slider here and this slider here are the between rotations of how they're going to apply. If that makes any sense. So if I put it to two times the normal size to four times the normal size, every time I place it down, it's going to pick something between those sizes. If I pick 0.1 to 1.24, every time I place it down, it's going to pick something between those two sizes. There's not a way right now where it looks like I can choose what size it is. So you kind of have to pick as you go. Sometimes 
some trees are bigger than others, obviously. Tree massive, tree green simple. So far this has been a pretty good learning experience and the learning curve isn't too hard. Like I said, this is the first time I've used it. I've only watched a little bit of the videos from the developer. I'm pretty impressed with how easy it's been to just do what I want to do. There's a couple hiccups, obviously. You can tell I'm struggling with certain functions that I have to figure out for myself. And without a tutorial, it can make it a little daunting if you don't know how to use these kinds of programs or if you've never used wonder draft or photoshop all right put a couple dead logs out there it's an interesting bug where if you click the stump or whatever you click if you click any of these symbols when you place them down it doesn't start with your scale that you chose the 0.1 to 1.24 so if you want your stumps to be a certain size, it's placing them down at its default size. At least that's what it seems to me. Let's try to test that method. Yeah, so if you'll notice when I slide the scale all the way down and I grab its stump, this is its default size and this is the size I was wanting to go between which is a huge difference. So you don't probably want to, uh, that's something that'll need to be addressed. When you select a new symbol, it'll stick to the scale you like. Can I put this under? Oh, cool. There we go. Can I change the color? These don't seem to have different colors. Some of these features are pretty intuitive and some need a little work. Again, it's just early access. There are things that are going to be changing as time goes on. This program, if it's anything like Wonderdraft, I see amazing things coming ahead. Oh, neat. There's a light tool. All right, well, let's go ahead and... Put some lights in my cottage. We'll call this one complete for now. It's nothing much. Like I said, I just wanted to try something simple. I could do a lot more by spending a lot more time, but I wanted to get this out there for everyone to see what it can do without having even tried it. Back to our objects. Back to our lighting. And I'm sure lighting is probably directly affecting that light sourcing. What is this? This is a wall torch. Make it smaller. And we'll put it over here. Put a lantern on the table. And then maybe the fireplace also affects it, so we'll put another wall torch back here. And does snap go right to the wall? No, so snap is hiding it behind the wall. All right, now let's go ahead and hit our lighting settings, light tool. Paste that down. And let's make it a little less, so... Ah, range. 
cool. You can even think of the range as like one might be a torch. It's probably not accurate, but if you're trying to make a map with lighting in mind, you could set one as a torch. You could maybe say two is a lantern. Three, the 3.5 is a fireplace. There'll be no light here in the stables. Still trying to figure out how to delete walls. If I could, I would go back. I'd delete this wall right here and make this an open stables. And speaking of stables, maybe a couple more items in the stables. There's got to be something left for that. Just go all... Have a little log pile. Maybe like a trough or something. Still don't know how to rotate symbols. Different kinds of graves. Honestly, I could use one of these for a horse trough or something. Maybe if I make this rotation zero. Now I do zero. Let's try it again. Nope. All right. Because the first one was on zero? I don't know. Ah, so each point has its own zero. Zero. And scale. Wonder if I can paint that. And just like that. Wow. That was actually... <laughs> That's pretty intuitive, and I like it. I don't know exactly what I just did. Well, I actually do. But I didn't think I could actually make it work. That was unexpected. Cool. Can I make the color different? Yeah, I could. So maybe... It's been a while since this lady's been in here. That didn't work. It has something to do with what layer it's on, and I haven't figured that out. It also has something to do with the way the terrain brush works. Or the water brush, or whatever you're using. There's got to be a way to remove certain things that you've done and to add certain things that you've done. Terrain brush, brush size. Terrain grass. Prairie. I don't know why I can't paint over the water that I just made. Ah, uh, I'll figure it out eventually. For now, we'll just call that spillover.
The other thing I'm not really too excited about right now with this is if you lower the intensity, the outside edges actually become opaque. Their opacity is low. I'd rather that they were solid objects, the opacity, at least for certain things like gravel, it makes more sense that it would be solid objects. Some things it might make more sense that it does have those opaque edges. This seems more to that style. I just haven't experimented enough to really make a distinction of what is the best or not. So brush size one doesn't even paint this gravel. Brush size two barely does. The one interesting thing I've seen is it seems like as you're painting this on, it's already there. It's just completing the layers. So if I start painting it and I connect it, it's all interconnected. All right, not my best map, not my worst. I've seen better. I missed one thing. Let's go back and this with the one light like I said lanterns be one or uh, torch lights are one lanterns are two fireplace even more light go ahead and save it dungeon draft I'm gonna save it here cottage don't have permission to save here all right let's try it again let's go ahead and save documents yeah, let's just do it on desktop. Save. Cottage. Moving on. We're going to create a new map and try something completely different. Really different. So, new. Yeah, the size works out for me. I don't need anything too large. And I want to create a boat. I saw that Mega Sploot was able to create a boat. It didn't seem like it was too difficult. There were some things that he probably knows how to um, use the software a little better, knows the different kinds of ways you can manipulate the tools. But I think we might be able to do it. Is there a path tool? So this would not do it. Paths don't seem like it would work. Okay, CPU is fine for this. Maybe it's floor shape. Edit points. Maybe it's walls. Concrete, wood, stone, battlements. Well, let's just try it. So that's not it. I did see a way you could actually manipulate the paths.
think I'm getting in there. If I click here and click once to confirm, then I hit shift. And then confirm. Then I hit shift. Confirm. Shift. Confirm. Shift. Confirm. That is an ugly boat. But I think I got the idea, so let's try it again. Click. This needs to be a straight wall, so I'll click once. I need a middle point, so I'll click again. This is my middle point, so I'll hold shift and click. Hold shift and click. And that's much better. It's still not perfect. So let's try it again. Go down five, two, three. think that did it it looks correct to me this time maybe <laughs> you tell me what you think in the comments below I'm not a hundred percent sure on this one let's go ahead and change our objects got workbenches is there something for just ships ship so click ship here we go. Ah, there's tons of things for just a ship. How about stairs? Oh, cool. Is it different for these two? Stairs, stairs, nope. Oh. Holding shift and scrolling scrolls through all your different symbols on the right hand side. That's kind of interesting. Put a stair right there. Actually, yeah, let's use this stair right here. Scroll this downwards. Back to our wall tool. Walls, wood. Snap. Put a wall right there. And we can do the same thing back here. Objects, object tool, stairs. Click snap back on. Yeah. Uh, nope. 
walls. I line these up better, or if there was a half snap, that would be good. It only snaps to the corners, which makes sense, but sometimes you might want like a half snap point. Finish the poop deck. And let's put on some more objects. There's a way to change these colors. Because it shows that it's silver in there. When I select it, it doesn't change the actual color. I'm not sure why that is. actually kind of baffles me. Back to objects. Is it because I'm using the sepia? It might have been what it was. Everything was in a sepia color. Okay, well, I figured it out. Put that on. Looks like there's sails, there's an anchor, a giant ass anchor. Doesn't look like anything goes above the walls, at least for now. I like to hang those ropes over the walls. Oh, I lied. Okay, layer 700 above walls. So hang those over. What else can I put in here? Put this not above the walls. Last thing I want to do is I kind of don't like the grid so in my face. I want to see if there's a way to change the grid. Half. 
objects, light and environment, level settings, grid color, custom, opacity. Ah. There we go. Turn the opacity down. It'd be cool if there is um, a way you can make grids a little less opaque on the outsides in the environment and more opaque as you're in a house or on a boat where you can still see them but just less visibility. And let's place a few more objects. Ship. I saw some little dinghies that he used in his uh, video. I don't see them here. Oh, there's carts, caves, boats. So there they are, little dinghies. Place the dinghies. Put some oars down, some sails. Using layer above walls, change the color, change the opaqueness. I'm definitely not making a seaworthy ship, just so you know. But I will do my best. This sail seems like it's more kind of the correct style. And it would be interesting if I could... Select these. Create a new level, except we're going to call this new level sales. Sales. Let's go back to our objects. I don't see that it's in here. If I place them down, ground sails, compare levels, opacity, that's good, okay. Object, so let's place sails, sails, let's get the large sail, put them all down right there. Back to ground, and let's select, delete, delete, delete. It'd be cool. Wonder if you could maybe duplicate your layer? Levels. Don't see it. Oh, well, back to ground, and that is my ugly, ugly completed ship. Maybe I could um make a new level. It, I would really like to see where you can duplicate your layer and it would duplicate floor and wall patterns, maybe even objects. And then you could delete the objects that you didn't want, or if there was some way to, uh, even if I guess it just was floors, portals, walls. And that way when you duplicate your layer here, I can make the uh, cabin under the poop deck, 
there's there's got to be some interesting things you can do. And I guess the last thing we have to do is we go back to our terrain brush, or maybe our water brush. Is that the largest you can go? Yep, that's the largest you can go. Can you just fill? Let's see, water brush, shape. Ooh, that did not work. Undo, redo. Well, I found a flaw in the program where I did not want to really brush over my boat. I wanted to brush under my boat. And here we are, we now have a sunken ship. You better get on the dinghies. Something to be concerned about. I don't know if there's a quick fix, but when I hit Control Z, the way the program works is it's undoing some of my selections, but it's not undoing my terrains. I don't know if that's meant to be. Snap. And I don't know, really, how to get rid of it. But it's definitely a problem if you've gone through a lot of work and then you get to this point where you brush on water. Is there an unbrush? And I crashed it. So, there you have it. That is Dungeon Draft. <laughs> Not the best way to end this video, but I think it's important for you to see the benefits that you can have with this program, the struggles that it has in early access, the things that you can do, the things that you want to do, and the things that you can imagine. And I didn't even save my boat. So in the end, I don't even have anything that you can see. But I feel like it wasn't too difficult to make. It took me a little bit of over an hour to do all of this, to learn a few different features, to understand what the tools do, to find the objects and the panels, to find the different tabs and how I can affect the world around me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe. Please tell your friends. Don't forget there's a giveaway. I'm gonna give away one free copy of Dungeon Draft one week from today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. If you like some of the maps I've done, I'm going to be doing more for our Twitch stream. You can find us on Twitch every Sunday morning at 7.30. You can come join us in our games and in our world. Right now, my friend's running the campaign. We've been doing this one for about 22 sessions. Soon, in about two or three months, I'm going to be running my own campaign again, and I'll try to run this one for about two or three years pretty cool actually our chat's gonna have involvement in creating establishments creating the world 
And I'm going to use Dungeon Draft to create the maps, the places that they come up with, if they come up with a cathedral or if they come up with different bars. I'm going to create those and put them on the overlay and give them credit for their ideas. I'm trying to make it as involved as I can for our chat and for our community. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.